Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alexander Vorobyov. I'm the DevOps engineer in Critical Services Group. Uh, in Critical Services, we're doing a lot of interesting, interesting things. Among of them, uh, here, especially in Kharkiv location, we we investigate in <clears throat> migration from different clouds to the AWS cloud uh, using different technical uh, services, uh, different approaches, and uh, <clears throat> uh, different workloads in terms of compute, uh, databases, and so on. We've already, uh, inside our team, we've already prepared a couple of presentations in terms uh, about that. But uh, today I'm uh, Today I'm going to discuss, like uh, in summary, what uh, migration approaches we have in general, what uh, migration pro um, programs we have in AWS, and uh, also what uh, what services uh, we uh, can help us in migration uh, customers uh, customers infrastructure to the AWS cloud. Uh, okay, uh, let's begin. So yes, yeah, this is uh, what we will be discussing today, like approaches, programs, and uh, and services. Uh, so in general, uh, there are like several kind of uh, migration strategies from on-premises or from other clouds to AWS. Like here, we will be um, here we will be discussing like four Earth approach. Uh, rehosting, replatforming, repurchasing, and refactoring, but uh, really there are um, more number of errors, I would say, like retain, retire, if, uh, this, we are not going to touch this, uh, this because they are not really interesting, like um, nothing, nothing uh, like interesting, yes, to, to discuss the and we will be speaking about main approaches, what they benefits, what they uh, strong and weak points, and uh, what uh, what customers prefer prefer to uh, often use, what customers what approaches customer prefer to start with, and how they evolve as a would say journey to the cloud. Uh, <clears throat> we will be discussing this uh, this. Uh, things on uh, this small example of simple infrastructure in this in this infrastructure we have uh, like simple simple pretty standard setup uh, with web server application server and uh, database uh, server instance all these layers separated between each other by firewalls and this is uh, uh, Typical infrastructure that is used on, for example, on premises for some middle size customers or something like that. And the first, uh, and the first approach we we'll, we are going to discuss here it is uh, a hoisting uh, or lift and shift approach. A lift and shift is um, is the um, um, simplest approach, and. Uh, uh, what it tells us, it's just we take uh, everything that uh, customer has on uh, on-premise infrastructure, uh, or its services, uh, web service, uh, application, databases. We simply take them and move them to the cloud as is, without any improvements and uh, I don't know changing in architecture, application. Uh, we don't we it's like cheapest cheapest i would say and fastest fastest approach uh yes we don't need to have uh involvement from, from developers basically from developers and uh yeah it's very cheap and fast and uh, based on uh, my experience on experience we have uh, in uh, like immigration projects most of the customers usually start with this because uh, you know they are not um, when they start to migrate they um it's, uh, they just start uh, the understanding of cloud benefits and uh sometimes they do not uh properly understand how how they can properly utilize cloud services and they and they come to us and say okay here what we have right now we don't want to spend so much time and money we just want to be in the cloud for some reason uh, as we don't, for example, if they are hosting on, uh, on VMware, they do not want to 
uh, pay, for example, for additional gear. Uh, they they have uh, like hard uh, hard times of scale in scaling or. Uh, yeah, they they want, for example, to scale, but it requires high, higher cost of capital expenses to be able to scale in on premises, and it's uh, much more easy to do in the cloud. So they simply start with a lift and shift approach and move uh, all infrastructure as it is. Uh, yeah, with this approach, we have uh, several benefits. Like I, I already said. We transfer in capital expenses to operational expenses cost, and we are reducing gen generally uh, general level of expenses spent on the infrastructure and, uh, and, and on improving and scaling infrastructure. Uh, we, uh, with uh, uh, lift and shift, it's easy to uh, migrate third party uh, third party or uh, legacy apps, uh, which. Uh, uh, which is not possible or very hard to re-architect or do something with them. Uh, this, uh, uh, this approach is uh, very fast and seamless for end, uh, for end users of this application. In, in uh, many cases, they don't need to uh, do, for example, if they are using client to access infrastructure, they don't have to do any modification uh, to their client configuration, maybe just only uh, Correct some endpoints, but <clears throat> but even that is not uh, like uh, always uh, to do. So this is very uh, like simple for customers and based on uh, and um, because of simplicity of this migration, <clears throat> there is also um, some limitation. Uh, we uh, with uh, lift and shift approach, we can't guarantee to the customers the level of uh, uh, level of uh, cost optimization as they uh, as they would gain uh, using other kind of <coughs> migration because yes is <coughs> because this approach is really simple we don't uh, we don't change in anything we are not utilizing cloud cloud services at all <coughs> So we could possibly uh, save more money using uh, like different cloud features and services. Uh, yeah, a little. <coughs> sorry. Uh, a little, uh, little visibility here means that <coughs> uh, for the customers there is uh, like not really, not very, um, not, mm, not obvious things after the migration it's not obvious to customers uh the power of uh, of the the power of the cloud it would utilize it in case of different kind of migration uh, so uh, we, we uh, yeah, as we face it uh um, not face it but we are trying to to talk to our customers and explain them, uh, for example, using like some modification to the application, we can start. Uh, you can start uh, utilizing cloud services more and more, and it will help you to develop your product further to to like. Uh, uh, save some cost for them, but with lift and shift, you are not able to do it, and that's why also we have missed opportunities here. Like we don't, <clears throat> we would, uh, we would uh, get better services, but get better, for example, redundancy, high level ability, utilizing some services than we have right now and also optimization problem uh, running uh, running in the same infrastructure as we are used to run in on premises we, we we are not able to optimize it uh, fully according to the to the mm, cloud nature so this was the first uh, first like variant of uh, migration uh, next step uh, of migration and so uh, like replatforming, it's uh, like lift, sinker, and shift. Uh, here we uh, see that the, for our application, we migrated migrated database that we used uh, that we hosted previously on uh, EC2 instance, and uh, before that we hosted them on on premises on services. We migrated them on Amazon uh, RDS services. Uh, this uh, uh, this gives us this already gives us a better 
uh, better cloud performance, better, uh, better high level ability, disaster recovery of like utilizing uh, Amazon RDS will allow, allows us to, uh, to use features like grid replicas and multi AZ deployment in case of RDS. Also, if we, uh, if we transfer from uh, MS, MS, MS SQL, for example, to RDS MS SQL, uh, we could save some some amount of uh, budget on licensing, uh, and also we can go further and uh, uh, go uh, and transfer not only from RDS MSS not to RDS MSS for for example, go directly to uh, RDS Aurora, which is a cloud built uh, database based on open source engines. Like compatible with open source, source engines, and with Aurora we have a better level of performance with, and durability, and we are gaining a lot of other features. But using lift, sinker, and shift approach, we <clears throat> uh, we already need to have. Uh, we, sometimes we need to do some modification in our application. For example, here in uh, <clears throat> in application instances, we would need to change uh, driver for the database, uh, for talking to the database, uh, for example, uh, if we uh, used, mm, if, if on premises we used MongoDB and uh, we transferred to the document DB, in some cases we have to modify uh, driver because uh, it's like uh, it's uh, MongoDB and DocumentDB are compatible up to uh, level three point six, but in some cases it could uh, it could uh, uh, how we we have to modify driver and in case of like moving from MS SQL to Amazon Aurora, we obviously need to change the driver. We also can. Uh, uh, also, in this approach, we already uh, can uh, have like a private subnet and uh, uh, use. Uh, well, in uh, lift and shift, we also could uh, use. I forget to mention that in lift and shift, we also could use not uh, move from firewalls like we used on premises. We could move to security groups and. Uh, mm and limit access to our instances using security room. But here we also can like uh, split our web server instance and application with uh, Amazon RDS to different different subnets, create so DMZ zones. So will give us a lot of flexibility. Uh, in general, this approach is uh, the next step after lift and shift. It uh, also has pros like uh, we uh, can save some cost on saving on licenses. It um, have good benefit uh, uh, of uh, having less operational uh, overhead. Uh, like I said, if we are moving from database of EC2 instances to the to RDS or some other like document DB, uh, <clears throat> we are we make some uh, operational resources free to do some other stuff uh, of improving our infrastructure, but we are not managing database and we are not doing these tedious tasks. Uh, yes, and uh, next process that we can choose uh, open platform. Like I said, we can transfer from uh, MS SQL to Aurora, MySQL compatible or PostgreSQL compatible, uh, which are open engines. Uh, of uh, of uh, weak points, I would say it's like uh, higher. Co it will be cost more uh, higher than simple lift and shift. It will require more uh, complex infrastructure testing. Call, uh, in case of database migration or some other changes, we have to we need to be sure that uh, this will work as as expected. Uh, and uh, possible could. Uh, Got the changes into applications, so it will require some some uh, effort from developers. Okay, uh, next uh, next step is uh, refactoring or rearchitecting. It's uh, one one of the most interesting for us as uh, DevOps, as infrastructure engineer way of uh, of migration. And uh, here we will like we can. So all our skills, we can, we can uh, we in 
we can uh, fully utilize uh, cloud services. Like here, we can go to go to use a Lambda function. We go to use uh, SNS, SQS, and uh, auto scaling group, and some other cool features that uh, AWS Cloud provides to us. And uh, in uh, again, in my experience, a lot of customers uh, they uh, like they starting from basic migration patterns like lift and shift and uh, this time they uh, start to realize uh, that they can use more uh, more capabilities of the cloud they could save more money be more effective be more scalable uh, <clears throat> and they uh, start switching to the re-architecting uh, as for me, yes, I on uh, pre on couple of previous project, I've already faced it with the situation like we started with the simple lift and shift, and uh, during the uh, during the execution execute phase of the project execution, customers uh, like pasted the cloud and said, "Hey guys, can you help me with architect some applications that we could use? We can, for example, go to containers, go to." Kubernetes or uh, like uh, here we go moving for example cage to elastic cage server and go to auto scaling group and some other stuff and uh, we did <coughs> we did it we uh, we uh, like implemented uh, this uh, this approach and it's really interesting it's really uh, at the end uh, at the end it it, re it requires um, it require more money from customer of course because we yeah it's so uh, complicated it will uh, we will have a complicated infrastructure it will require complicated like testing of the applications that it is capable to work in this infrastructure but at the end it will it will bring uh, very cool benefits to the customers and its its infrastructure. Uh, okay, yes. What are the benefits uh, it brings? Like its <clears throat> application uh, become highly scalable. Like here, we we see that uh, we are able to use auto scaling group for application level instances. We can also have uh, auto scaling group for. Uh, for web layer instances, and uh, also, as I said, we can utilize Elastic Cache services. We can utilize Lambda functions for some <coughs> execution for some tasks execution. Uh, and also, <coughs> before we, uh, for example, before we used only uh, a MySQL database for all the data, but uh, with our architecture, we understand that some data could be more effectively hosted in Amazon DynamoDB or DocumentDB. It's like it's uh, because this data, this data could be <coughs> effectively represented in uh, NoSQL patterns, but some data still can be uh, hosted on relational database and we can choose Aurora for this. So it uh, dramatically increase scalability. Uh, in the future, it, uh, it will bring us a fast time to market uh, because implementing, uh, uh, for example, uh, on one of the project when we moved from uh, big uh, a big monolith which was a legacy and written like about 15 years ago uh, customer invented some uh, amount of money and uh, level people time to to split it to some microservices and now if he uh, customer is able to add new features add new services to its application separately and with uh, and very fast so this is like very cool benefits which will of course uh, will be uh, will be available late as uh, after the after the migration and uh, also fully utilized cloud services which uh, would allow us be um, more like elastic scalable and up, uh, operate uh, more redundantly in highly available way like we can utilize uh, we can utilize in different regions and uh, consequently for example using the road 53 we can uh, have like different load balancing strategies for dns queries like weighted like uh, uh, 
tied to the location of the customers. For example, if we can have our infrastructure split across the world and the customers from Asia will be going to the Asia Pacific region, customers from uh, United States will be go to the one of the region represented in the United States. So it will gives us a lot of flexibility and uh, as for cons it's uh, like logical uh, uh, logical cons uh, by of this approach this approach is must uh, is uh, most expensive uh, because we we need a lot of uh, work of infrastructure engine from infrastructure engineer we uh, need work from developers uh, also very often this um, approach uh, requires transformation of the organization because not all organizations are ready to uh, are ready to uh, like to host the infrastructure to the services they like get used uh, to the way how they previous worked how they previous worked uh, uh, on their environment and they are not ready to use all benefits that clouds brings to them uh, and also it could take a uh, long I, uh, a long time to implement as the reason uh, I was I was talking about already okay and uh, the next uh, the next uh, migration strategy it's like not not really migration but still uh, technically speaking it's migration is simply a repurchase in, in repurchase model for example if we have if customers have like some crm and uh, it's especially it's very often in uh, uh, in financial area in banks when banks develop uh, in their uh, <clears throat> In the internal department they develop some crm they will they use it but uh regulatory requirements are of uh, are changed very often and it's very hard to uh, to implement of regulatory requirements in time using like some amount uh, using a uh, small team of developers inside this financial sector is just only one example and uh, very often it's more uh, more feasible to uh, buy uh, buy already created solution from third party from uh, SAP, Oracle, Salesforce, yes, and use uh, use this product uh, use this product and uh, which is guaranteed to be supported, guaranteed to uh, to comply with regulatory standards and so on. So this is also one of the model of uh, of migration. And also, this model has its pros and cons. As pros, we have, uh, of course, you have less administrative overhead. You don't need to have all this uh, team supporting your application, developing this application. Uh, and uh, the products that you are buying often has more features. It, it uh, often, often implemented uh, in more professional way and it uh, often brings uh, excellent value for the money that is spent on this um, that is spent on this product and uh, also we have some cons about this uh, approach like vendor lock-in it's when a uh, customer move to this product it's very very hard to to uh, go to another product to competitors and so it's like vendor lock-in uh, of course it could be some limitation of customization because very often co uh, companies like SAP, Oracle, Salesforce they uh, they build products uh, like in general to fit all customers needs and if you require some customization it could it could be it could require some um, like hard to to achieve this customization from the from the from the vendor and uh, also possible need to change business processes because previous organization worked with its internal tool and uh, all, all processes was all, all processes were aligned with this extra internal tool sometimes it will require to change processes to to be aligned with this new feature but like it's one of the migration approaches so uh, and uh, it's it it could be uh, feasible 
for customers. Okay, uh, let's talk about <clears throat> how AWS uh, and we as uh, as like partners of AWS could help customers uh, to migrate their workloads to the uh, to the cloud. So very often customers uh, they uh, understand that. Uh, maybe uh, like maybe they achieve uh, get some benefits from moving to the cloud but there are still a lot of open questions uh, how they can use it uh, how they could uh, how they could implement security how how to build processes what is devops what is continuous development how other doing how other people and their competitors do it and um, on these questions <clears throat> Uh, AWS and we trying to uh, trying to answer to our customers uh, to help them with that, and uh, we have uh, we have programs uh, to help us to answer customers with that. The first of this of uh, this program is like cloud adoption framework. Cloud adoption framework is uh, uh, is not uh, like technical technical services but uh, but more uh, like uh, a description of how to uh, how to change organization how to change organization processes to be ready to move to the cloud for example here in this slide that you see that organization on current state it has it has a high upfront cost as i what was talking like uh, high capital expenses into uh, scaling uh, long time to value to value because implementing some feature requires like uh, investment and long time of development and testing uh it is expensive to be secured because you have to uh you have to take care uh about security from the like ground level from the level of you building the uh, data center providing networking power supply and uh or securing it net or securing these firewalls it's on your side everything is on your side and uh, very often and very important thing that um, expenses on expenses on infrastructure is not always by business aligned it means that not all uh, you customers can't estimate what how much money it's spent to the particular business like direction and how much money it's uh, it's uh, all infrastructure cost for this business direction as and as a desired state what this organization wants to be like it's obviously a lower upfront cost uh, as easy uh, to be easier uh, how to say um, easy expand and easy create new features uh, like agility agility and creating new features built in security and uh, uh, infrastructure and it's IT infrastructure should be like enabler for this, for the business. It should allow quickly expand, quickly add new new features to the uh, to the product. So this is how <clears throat> this is what every organization wants to want to be. And uh, uh, cloud adoption framework uh, describes uh, all transformations that have has to be done with organization like in six perspective like business perspective like uh, uh, how to align business uh, uh, to the cloud governance per perspective how to organize uh, business strategy and goal security perspective how to implement security and how to be secure in the cloud people perspective in terms of um, roles and new skills uh, what uh, uh, what people should uh, should have in the organization and uh, should uh, gain in organization uh, platform perspective is to how to implement new solution in the cloud and the operational is uh, describe uh, describe focus areas IT infrastructure should uh, work on to achieve achieve the success in the cloud and based on this uh, based on uh, this um, like evaluation uh there is a cloud adoption framework action plan is action plan is like a jura board for the organization for uh, as you can see here for different perspective and to you and uh, organization should like close tickets i would say uh to achieve achieve as a their goal and another pretty cool program which uh 
uh, be as, as a soft source also participating and uh, like migration acceleration program. Migration acceleration program is a set of tools and methodologies uh, to help uh, customers to migrate to the cloud. And uh, among them tools and methodologies, uh, you can see that <clears throat> Here are the AWS partners, and uh, and uh, uh, SoftServe is all, uh, already uh, AWS partner with AWS in uh, software as a service competency in other competency, and we are working also right now in migration competency to be uh, primary AWS partners. So this is like uh, uh, this is like set of tools and methodologies that. Uh, help customers to train their internal um, internal resources, internal people, um, train to cloud to gain cloud skills. Like uh, uh, involve uh, efforts from partners, uh, uh, involve some uh, tools to estimate organization readiness to the migration to the cloud. So it will greatly help uh, help customers to uh, in migration process. So I would I as I what uh, as I was saying like it is. Uh, it offers proven methodology, like based on the other uh, experience from other people who, who was uh, already uh, migrating. It's secure approach, uh, like uh, new capabilities open open for the customers, uh, driven of course by business needs to align <clears throat> each particular business uh, business. Uh, to the uh, particular IT infrastructure, and uh, it will help to speed up the process, speed up the process of migration, and make it faster. Because yeah, as faster you go to the cloud, as as faster you gain benefits from this migration. Uh, and this uh, this program uh, also, um, in terms of doing it, in co contains of three parts, like migration readiness assessment. It's you know. Uh, it includes partners' involvement. We, as a partner, goes to the client, uh, go go to client and uh, estimate uh, estimate its infrastructure in terms of how it's better to perform migration uh, and from we, from what point we we are starting migration. Uh, next step is uh, readiness and planning of the migration, and uh, the last step. Uh, most interesting is migration is uh, migration process itself. The, all these three steps could take uh, for <clears throat> starting uh, from several months. So it's not really fast process, but we are trying to help uh, to achieve uh, the goals for the customers as faster as possible. And this is like simple description here. Simple description here. Uh, what uh, of like with customers who has like uh, some doubts, some impediments, how how can it migrate to the cloud? And here we have like partners who will help to increase uh, to migrate and speed up this process uh, and solve its impediments. And of course, uh, now let's go to a little bit more. Um, not technical, but a little bit, bit more to services that Amazon offers. First of them is uh, AWS uh, Database Freedom. Database Freedom is a service that <clears throat> uh, help uh, help our customers to migrate from uh, migrate their database workloads. It's like involves expert uh, involves experts from partners who. Uh, uh, who pro who provide migration assistance and expert advice on uh, on on what workloads are, uh, it's better to migrate to migrate the dat databases and how to migrate, for example, for, yeah, it, uh, it can be migration to document DB, to Aurora, to Redshift, uh, to, to uh, Redshift warehouse, uh, and for DynamoDB, and in case of like. Of a document DB, Dynamo DB, how it's better to build some uh, indexes, how to properly configure a database to host uh, no uh, uh, no SQL data in the cloud because it's really very important step to configure uh, no SQL databases before uh, configure properly indexes because uh, you should get a lot of benefits of uh, you 
customer can get a lot of benefits from hosting NoSQL database in, for example, in DocumentDB and DynamoDB, but if indexes are built incorrectly, it could lead to like very expensive uh, scan operations, which will like uh, cross all, all the benefits that I get, which we are gaining from the moving to NoSQL. So it's really a complicated and very important step and should be provided or should be provided with by experts. And of course, we can migrate to Aurora, the cloud native, uh, cloud native solution uh, for relational databases and Redshift for data warehouse. Uh, this is uh, time for questions, but uh, I wanted to uh, I wanted to like uh, speak about a uh, couple other migration services. Uh, what uh, we were we in Kharkiv location were working on investigating. It's it was. Uh, database migration service which is uh, which is a uh, uh, service that uh, that automates migration from the cloud uh, we uh, we uh, had some experiments with this we migrated like <clears throat> Uh, data. Uh, we migrated data from different like MSSQL to Amazon Aurora and also the database migration service has a, a schema conversion tool uh, is the tool that helps uh, help you as a as an engineer who performs this migration like on the fly during the migration build some indexes uh, <clears throat> uh, do uh, uh, do some, for example, sometimes when when you perform migration, uh, type of uh, type of the columns could not uh, type of the columns uh, or few type of the fields on the source database could not be uh, the same as a destination database of schema conversion tool can help uh, can help with this it will on the fly convert the data in the specified field to the uh, to comply with this desti uh, destination database uh, also if we, <coughs> uh, we are currently investigating some uh, some services uh, for migration compute workloads like uh, uh, server migration uh, Server migration service like uh, Cloud and Do, which are <clears throat> which greatly help to migrate compute workload from on premises or from other clouds to the AWS. And uh, for example, server migration service could create even uh, like cloud formation template. For example, uh, <clears throat> for example, if you have uh, like uh, Compute instances with the web application and the compute instances with database. You can create like group of these compute instances and migrate them uh, to to AW to AWS cloud. It it will generate for you automatically cloud formation template and uh, and uh, spin up this uh, cloud formation template and uh, create this infrastructure uh, on the on the AWS cloud. So this is really interesting feature. We we are testing it as for us the approach for migration is a cloud cloud endure cloud endure cloud endure is a service uh, like uh, sms server migration service works on images level it just simply it create image of uh, on source database and create mei on the destination but a cloud endure which is it works on uh, block level of the of the instances so in the source instance you, uh, you install uh, agent which will copy which we copy data from the disk by blocks to the destination on the AWS and it will uh, it will allow you to have uh, like continuous replication and uh, continuous replication of data that is changed on the source and will, it will be replication on the on the destination so this is a really cool feature really cool feature to migrate and also you can uh, do uh, you can do with this uh, service you can do disaster recovery it means that uh, it will be uh, you can set up a replication on the um, on the boss direction if you have uh, problems in this uh, in aws region in aws like availability zone uh, also, the data that was changed on uh, AWS was was already replicated for you to on premise if you already set up it before. So this is 
like basic or basic overview of uh, what we have uh, in terms of uh, migration services and as i said in the beginning here in uh, critical services in parking location we are we are performing investigation of different migration approach different migration services and strategies of what uh, we can offer to to customers and if you have uh, any questions you can contact to me you can contact uh, our guys in parking uh, location and we will be happy to answer you so this is uh, basically it now really time for yeah time for questions so if you have any questions welcome thank you for your time and attention so th thanks alexander it's pretty useful topic about migration to AWS because we all know how much projects are starting in our company with such kind of problems. So, uh, but I would like to ask you more in terms of your experience. Uh, how did you deal with situation when in the middle of migration you, you found in the client such a feature or architecture that is not supported or difficult to implement in AWS cloud? Uh, however, it was missed at the discovery stage. Uh, for example, uh, from my experience, it's such kind of um, problem was any cast traffic which is required for some service. So what way out of this situation do you see? Yeah, it's really pity that it wasn't discovered on the, uh, wasn't found on discovery stage. Uh, but, um, it depends, you know. I, I can't give you an answer on general approach how to how to deal with uh, in such kind of situation. But obviously, you need to communicate it with the customers. So you need to communicate is that you uh, you have this problem, you have this, uh, you have this. But uh, in every particular case, uh, you um, you need to find the solution or work around like to avoid to implement this and uh, it's it's discussable i would say and it's um it's uh depends on how how much time it will take for you to create a workaround or for customers to for customer to if it's uh, if if it's possible at all for customers to modify its application to not to uh, have not to use this feature that is not available on AWS. In our particular case, we uh, what uh, we uh, had a problem when we migrated from MS MS SQL MS SQL that was hosted on on premises. We were trying to migrate as is the database to uh, MS uh, SQL on RDS, and at some point we realized that. Um, customers uh, uses some feature, some fields in its database that uh, which are not supported on RDS. Yes, and uh, uh, we had two option. We had two option there. First one, it was uh, try to modify uh, application or customers application not to use this feature or somehow to use analog of uh, this feature that is available on rds or migrate it not to rds or try to uh, separate this database from the general database and use it as a instance we had to do it on on like a mysql ec2 instance and uh, as i remember uh, we've discussed it with customers and customer agreed that uh, this feature is not really important it's not hard to change uh, application on his site and we were after that we were able to continue migration to ms sql rds so i i can't uh, answer like silver bullet can give you self silver bullet answer yes that you'll fit all the needs but in uh, you should consider like each particular case and discuss it with customer yeah, sure. It's, there is no universal answer for this situation. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. uh, actually, we also have a, a question in group chat from Metrono Vohatsky uh, about AWS 
uh, database migration service about if you have experience, in, for example, about uh, migrate mig of immigration or converting RDMC or converting from Oracle to MySQL or Postgre. Uh, look, yeah, um, my colleague Alexey Bebich already answered him as he. Uh, yeah. If we, we are in a team like we were investigating database migration server and we did uh, it wasn't uh, really production migration uh, as far as I know we yeah it's it wasn't right like production uh, migration we had uh, uh, we had not really production database we migrated to we migrated to the as I remember to Postgres or something for using the schema conversion tool, but yes, I don't know. He says that page is not found. The page doesn't exist. Okay, we can permissions. probably per permissions. Yeah. yeah. Ah, yeah, it's permission. Yeah, maybe we, we should we should check it out. But also, uh, there is a page on if you go to uh, if you go to workplace if you go to workplace critical services, uh, we have. Uh, couple articles uh, zero in critical services space uh, with description of what we did in during our investigation uh, we have article about database migration service and uh, uh, about Aurora and uh, uh, we have upcoming article about uh, migration like with cloud and do and the server migration services this article will be posted in workplace in uh, our cloud in critical space also so you can go there and check it out and contact us if you have any other questions on this yeah and one more question from metro uh, does someone migrated workloads to some other cloud vendor maybe they have some other interesting approach that differ from ones that was present here could you please share your experience? Uh, we, of course, we have, uh, as, as I know, in uh, soft server, we had uh, migrations to to GCP cloud, for, like from on premises, uh, from AWS, from other cloud providers. We had migration projects to GCP cloud, to Azure. But I, uh, I wasn't involved uh, in this kind of. Uh, projects we work only with AWS of course I know they <clears throat> uh, they have uh, also some tools uh, to help uh, during migration approaches but <laughs> we had you know uh, it's not uh, not directly answered to your questions but uh, we had like internal presentation in our location for the uh, two guys from uh, other uh, who work with other clouds for Azure, for GCP. We have internal presentation to these guys of our of what we have in AWS, what uh, means, what technical services we have in AWS, and they were pretty impressed. So I think uh, uh, pretty impressed, and they said, okay, cool, these this services are cool. So I guess that Azure also has some services, as, but they are not as cool as we have in AWS. <laughs> Something like that. Any other questions, guys?